Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, where we watch every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sean. And I'm Tanil. And today we are looking at 1964's of Stars and Men. You had to blink for the name real quick. I was like, wait, is it of Men of Stars or Stars and Men? Of Stars and Men. Of Stars and Men. And, uh... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if some people have seen this in their science class. Yeah, yeah, it got started in about, oh, I don't know, a few minutes in, I'm like, I feel like I'm back in middle school in a science class, and I'm trying to, like, stay awake and pay attention to every little thing that they say, because there might be a test afterwards. <laughs> yeah, because it's like a... it technically tells a story sort of but it's more of like a informational let's talk about the wonders of science and space and stuff like that because we're right in the middle of the space race at this point in history correct yeah so i'm well and i mean this is 1964 so we're in the middle of the space race science has hit a huge boom However, with that being said, you know, this is also science from 1964. So, they don't necessarily know everything yet. Yeah, but I mean, there we is don't a, know everything yet. There is a general... Like, Excitedness about science. Right. It's like, even if we don't know everything, we've learned so much recently, and it's so cool! Yeah, and since it's 1964, this movie can get away with saying things like, uh, you know... Put superstition behind us. Mm -hmm. We should rely more on science. Because this is before America has just become completely disheartened in science. Mm -hmm. Disheartened in science and... Or, and or skeptic of it, which is kind of what this movie is about, too. Mm -hmm. About, don't be skeptic of science. Science is cool. It'll science is places. cool. Science is the way of the future. Yeah. And men of the future will do better because of science. Mm-hmm. And that is not a commentary one way or another. But I do, I like the message of this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So, again, there's not really a plot per se, but it does, like, start in one location and just, like, goes through in, like, it episodes. Has a, it has an arc. We start off with a whole bunch of animals, and a lion is, like, the king of the animals, mm -hmm. mammals. Um, and then they come across a human, human boy who's taking Doing his care stuff. of yeah, who's taking care of some sheep and planting and stuff. And I think it's supposed to symbolize like man, man's ability to do cognitive skills and learn and right because it specifically shows stuff like you know herding sheep and farming, farming and having a watch and keeping track of time and then doing math and harvesting and all this other stuff and the lion's just like you know what i'm 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 out i'm not a king here you have this crown yeah the lion just hands over the crown uh, and then once the boy has the crown it moves into this segment segmented the segmented space uh, sequences that are about space, time. You missed one very key part. Hmm. The the kid is like, oh, I'm the king. I can do whatever I want, and things are great, and I know everything. And then he sees a comet in the sky, and he's terrified. That's right. And he doesn't know what to do, so he starts worshiping his god that he has in his house which doesn't work and then he goes outside and starts worshiping the comet but nothing happens so then he decides that animal sacrifice is the way to go and goes after his sheep with an axe and nothing works nothing changes it doesn't go away and that's when we transition into uh like he's in this building castle. this castle of I'm going to call it knowledge. It never, like, says that. But, like, this is where it starts going into, like, talk. Like, this is when the narrator comes in and starts talking about how man is great and can cognit has cognitive abilities and space is interesting and amazing and cool and we should go explore it. And, like, 
then like breaks down into like we're gonna explore all these different things yeah so it breaks up into the sequences of space time matter and energy yes and then is there life in space is like the final section yeah yeah and this is based on a book um but obviously like this is all a very foreshortened version of it well yeah and it's like a science research Mm -hmm. kind of book you know or like a thought piece Mm -hmm. kind of book um, like, I've collected all this research data from scientists, and I've written a book about it, and it's inspiring and cool. Right. And while there is the little animated sequence of the kid and the animals and all that, this is definitely leaning more on the documentary mm-hmm. side Just than talking, it is on a conventional storytelling Yeah, narrative. it's talking more about, like, what science we know and stuff like that mm-hmm. at the time this movie was made, of course. Right. Like, for the segment of space, it talks about, you know, it goes from, like, your small atoms all the way out to space. Space. And, like, the when it gets to space, it's really funny because it's like, all right, so we got meteorites and planets and stars and clusters of stars and galaxies and clusters of galaxies. <laughs> It's like, it kind of all gets a little fuzzy after that point, we admit, but but we've got some kind of term for we it. We kind of understand that there's a lot of stuff out there, <laughs> which is really amusing. It's just yeah. like, it's this thing, and then a, a group of those things. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it moves into matter. Or time. And, oh, no, yeah, time, and then it takes you through, you know. We start... Billions of years ago, because this is when it's like, yes, the Earth is billions of years old. So mm-hmm. we go back and then we see like little bacteria and like single cell organisms and slowly work up and like showing trilobites and stuff like that. And then it moves into like dinosaurs very briefly and then mammals and then we're in the present. Yeah. And all these segments are fairly short. This is all, was only like a 55-minute film. Yeah, something like that. So each section is probably like a total of 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, if if even. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's usually some kind of like a little bit of like connecting tissue. Of the between, king. Of the king like contemplating these things. And looking at the next door and like yeah. the thing, hijinks happen. Mm-hmm. And then the next segment's... Interesting, because two more characters come in. It's mm-hmm. these really young kids, and they start talking about matter. Matter, and, like, and elements. elements. And it's the director's children who are voicing these characters. And typically that's something that, you know, in any film you're like, oh, no. <laughs> but it honestly sounds like... The older kid might have had some sort of script to go off of, but the younger kid obviously was too young to, like, have anything to go off to of. To just, yeah, to read. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're like, the older kid is like, I know everything, so I'm explaining it to you because Dad told me. Yeah. And it's super adorable. It's really cute. <laughs> and, like, the visuals they have, like, they're using elements as, like, building blocks and stuff, and then, like, these the, the elements as being cubes. Uh, and, like, just permeates the rest of the whole movie, which is really cool. And, like, as we were watching, it was like, hmm, I don't know if this is true. Probably not. But I wonder if uh, Notch uh, had seen this movie when he started working on Minecraft. (laughs) Probably not. It should probably just, like... I mean, it's a pretty, it's a fairly basic idea that uh-huh. you could see like somebody just coming up blocks. with. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I was like, I wonder if you've seen this. But it made you this. think of Minecraft. Yeah, it made me think of Minecraft. It's That's like cute. Everything's made yeah. out of blocks, which I mean, is what it's all, it, the building blocks of life and stuff like that. So it's like uh, it might just be the same concept that they're both working off of. Yeah. Or unintentionally going off of this. Yeah. And then, after matter, it talks about about energy. energy. Which is just 
matter that's moving moving really fast <laughs> or just moving mm -hmm. yeah and it has the kids talking again yeah because they're because the older one's trying to explain it's like well energy and matter like they're the same thing but in like different states mm-hmm and the the younger kid doesn't get it, so like the older kid has to keep explaining, and then finally the young one's like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh!" I get it. I get it. Sometimes you just gotta get things or something. Like <laughs> it's super adorable. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm sure you totally understand what's going on, kid. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, but. It, and then it wraps up with just like kind of this hopeful message where the king is like looking back at the past of humanity mm -hmm. and it shows him walking along the present and having to continue walking into the future. Mm -hmm. And then it all kind of like zooms out to the space. earth and space. Like, is there more life out there? And it's like giving statistics like, well, there's, it has to be planets that is like, we can't find life on anything that isn't a planet because of reasons that they roughly lay out in the video. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, like one in a thousand stars is going to have, uh, is going to be the proper size and by itself or whatever. And then one in a thousand of those is going to have like a planet that's, of the appropriate size to have an atmosphere. And one of the thousand of those is going to be the correct distance from the sun to not melt life or freeze it. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, it's just so many odds against it being possible, but it's still possible. It's still possible. And in fact, of the known galaxies and stuff that we've discovered so far, there's probably 100 million planets that could have life on it. Mm hmm. Do we know which ones they are? Obviously not, but yeah. they can exist. Yeah. So is there a life out there? And then it takes... Probably. Yeah, and then it takes a little bit to, like, go, you know, oh, and but just think, like, even if there is life, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's developed the same way we have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it's just, you know, like, life... This, like animals that are on our planet or yeah, something Yeah, it doesn't totally necessarily different. mean that there's anything equivalent to humans. Um, or, you know, it might maybe. all just be like a whole planet of fruit flies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe they have evolved as far as we have, but it like didn't give any visuals at this point. It's just right. kind of like... A lot of this, all just speculation. A lot of this is stuff. just like abstract shapes for most of this video, or mm -hmm. like the movie. Um and then, like, there's one speech at the end talking about how, because of science, we figured out that we as a society and humanity have a good chance of making a good place for ourselves here. And, like, we have nothing that's going to destroy us in the immediate future so that we can, like, move oh. forward and, like, like, we have a good atmosphere and we have a good... The climate change is not a threat. The most big, the biggest threat that we have to our to humanity is man. Yeah, it literally says like the biggest threat to, to ourselves to ourselves is, is ourselves. ourselves. And Sean and I are just like. Oh. I mean, it's true, but also we've destroyed our climate. <sighs> we we are in the process of destroying our planet. Uh huh. So y you know. This, this was made in the 60s when they didn't realize that we were having severe repercussions upon the planet, even well, then, I mean, and even more so in the future. I don't know. They, they had to have... Started? Maybe not with the whole climate change thing, but they, like, the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Like, they had to know that, you know, a bomb going off... Oh, that being said, it does know... Like, this movie acknowledges that atomic bombs are a thing and are dangerous. Because mm -hmm. at one point, one of the kids takes, like, one of the element building blocks and rips it in half, and then it, like, explodes. And they're like, ah! Yeah, and then they and run away all scared. So it's like, yeah, we acknowledge that the atomic bomb is a thing, and it's dangerous, but we're not going to talk about it. Well, see, and I, I could be 
completely wrong here, but I think in the 60s, um, scientists did not have a great understanding of how devastating nuclear weapons could be on the planet. Mm. Like the fallout or just like Yeah. Well the like general like they impact. kind of knew that fallout was a thing. At this point. But like seeing ahead, you know, the way we have, we've seen what bombs have done to Mm-hmm. Areas. Entire areas and generations of people. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. or, you know, secluded islands that they test these things on. How Stuff it like that. Screws up the life on those. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they're starting to realize this here because this is about the time that things like gamma radiation and mutant monsters and stuff like that really pop into the general public. Mm -hmm. It's like we're going to space but also getting attacked by mutants at the same time in fiction. Yeah. Because that's where we are with our science. Yeah. And of course this is Sean and I just kind of talking. Speculating. Yeah, we don't know for sure. So if you guys have more interesting... uh, If you have like actual more knowledge of like what we knew at that time. What science knew in the 60s. Yeah, we'd like to hear it. Uh, leave us a com- comment below. But anyway, talking about the history of this movie. Mm-hmm. Made in 1964 uh, by John Hubley and his wife Faith Hubley. We've seen them before. We have? Yes, we have. They worked at UPA. That reads, yep, okay, mm-hmm. It's like, I'm looking at their art style, and I was like, I feel like I've seen this before. It looks very familiar, and now that you say UPA, it's like, we've seen them before, I'm like, wait, did they work at UPA? And you're like, yes, they did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> I confirmed your suspicions. Uh, John Hubley uh, is like a co-creator of Mr. Magoo. Hmm. Did he work on Ratatat Tat? Or whatever that one. Rudy Toot Toot? Rudy Toot Toot. Yes, he and his wife worked on Rudy Toot Toot. Okay, yeah, I can they see. They also that. worked on Gerald McBoing Boing. Okay, yeah. So, did they do that? They obviously didn't do this through UPA. Um, did they no. get like a f- government funded or privately funded? Uh, they funded it. Uh-oh. They started, from what I can tell, um, they started their own studio. Uh, oh, geez. What was, their, what was their studio called? I mean, it definitely is a movie that was made by a very small crew of people. Yeah. Um, it uses a lot of like, music, er, like classical music. Yeah. The, the Hubleys jointly founded Storyboard Studios as an independent animation studio vowing to make one independent film a year. Interesting. They collaborated on more than 20 short films up until John's death during open heart surgery in 1977. Oh, that's sad. Mm-hmm. But then Faith Hubley actually went on to keep making animations. Really? Uh-huh. And cool. Do they make more films? Or is it mostly just like shorts and stuff? Uh, they have a lot of shorts. I think a few of these are films, though. Okay, so they might show up again on Animation Pilgrimage? Yeah, and I know for sure John Hubley sort of shows up again on Animation Pilgrimage because he was the uh, initial director for Watership Down. Oh, But then he died... Right near the beginning of the production, okay. so then a different director stepped in. Okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah. To say the least. Mm-hmm. We're learning things. Learning! With this Yay! science movie. Edutainment! But, uh... But the reason... Mm-hmm. There's a reason uh, John and Faith started their own studio and left UPA... And actually, I, I just want to say that before, Hubley actually worked at Disney, um, and he did layout art for Snow White, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Bambi, and 
um, helped with the Rite of Spring segment from Fantasia. Mm, okay. But he he was one of the artists that was in the strike, and so he left uh, the studio okay, and yeah. then joined UPA. Mm -hmm. Worked there for a while. But then he was forced to leave UPA in 1952 when he refused to name names before the House Committee of Un-American Activities. Yay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to elaborate what In case that... people don't know what the House Committee of Un-American Activities is. Mm -hmm. It's basically one of the most un-American things. Well, I can't even say that. But it's a really, really shitty program mm -hmm. the government set up uh, to essentially... <sighs> Find communism. Accuse people of communism. Yeah, accuse people that you don't like of being either communist or fascist mm -hmm. so that they can... Oh, what even happens to people that get accused? Well, in John Hubley's situation where... He wasn't even being accused. He just refused to name names. Mm -hmm. He was called by them, refused to testify, and he was blacklisted. So he couldn't oh. work in Hollywood. That sucks. But I'm just like, what happened to people that actually were accused then? I mean, obviously they were probably blacklisted, but did they get like... I would say deported, but I don't even know if... Thrown in jail. Thrown in jail. Who knows what else? Disappear. Yeah. Uh. I mean, in one of these things that I read, um, it said basically if you even showed up as like... A potential? Well, like if you were talked about by the House of Un-American Activities at all in a positive or negative light, it could just be like a life-shattering event. Suddenly, you'd be left by family, friends, mm. lose your job. No one wants to be associated with you. Mm -hmm. Because you're associated with them. With, with this, yeah. God, that's... That's awful. And for more awful stuff about the House of Un-American Activities, they're the ones that... Uh, put together the argument for the internment of Japanese Americans. I was pretty sure that's where this came from. Mm-hmm. You want to know what they called that, by the way? No. The Yellow Report. That's a thing we did. You know, I really hate America sometimes. Yeah, I know. I guess it's just a reminder that America's always had horrible things done in the name of the government. Yeah. Anyway, back back to... You just gotta try to make it better. Yeah. Either way. Back to Of Stars and Men. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess... Oh, well, I guess I could talk about Faith for a little bit, because I'm not sure we're going to get back to... Um, any other movies that she's made? I, th mm -hmm. I think we will. But in case we don't, uh, she and John Hubley were married until his passing. And um, she went on to continue making films. Her many solo projects established her as a significant film creator in her own right. She began her first solo project, Wow! Women of the World, after being diagnosed with breast, with breast cancer in 1975. Hmm. So two years before... Her husband died. Her husband died. And she ended up living until 2001. Wow. Where she finally did die to breast cancer. But... Holy cow. When was she born? How old was she? Uh, she was born in 1924... And her husband, John, was born in 1915? 1914. Okay. So he was 10 years older than her? Yeah, roughly. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, seems like a really interesting couple. And I'm, I'm interested now to look up more of their work specifically. There's one um, short in particular that they won an award for 
called Moonbird, which I really think we should watch. It's from 1959. But we might just have to tack it on here now. Yeah. We'll tack it on to the shorts of this decade, because it's so close and we had no idea that this even existed. Mm -hmm. But after watching this, I enjoyed their... I guess going back to the actual film itself, the uh -huh. animation that did exist was really enjoyable. It, it was very it, nice. Now that I know it from people that worked at UPA, it feels very UPA, and they're good at animation. When, when you they know, try. When they try. <laughs> yeah, see, and that was the thing, too, is this looked very UPA, but it wasn't so limited. Like, like yeah. there was some actual nice, fluid animation here. Like, when characters are doing things, they're doing things, not just insinuated to be doing things. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, the quality of the film has Aged not... very badly. Yeah, it's not been remastered or anything like that, I don't think. At least not the version we found. The um, version we found, it looks like it's been artifacted to hell, and it's probably a rip from some, like... VHS. VHS that wasn't kept very well. Who knows? Yeah. So th the quality has unfortunately deteriorated quite a bit. Which is too bad, because it looks like it was probably a, a very pretty film. Mm -hmm. Simple, but pretty. Yeah. So... I don't know, maybe check it out if you're interested in 64-era science. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will also give a warning, though. Um, because of the artifacting and the... Uh, just the age of the film, mm -hmm. um, there's some slight strobing effects and some like weird star effects that even if they were in high quality would probably be a little disorienting. Yeah, we watched on our large TV and like they have stars moving in like three different directions at the same time and it made me dizzy and I had to look away. Yeah, we like, typically oh. don't have a problem with that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, no, it's just like I can't look at this right now. Yeah, so be forewarned. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I think that's all. And next time, we have another American film. Is this the fourth American film in a row? No, no. Before Sword in the Stone, there was uh, The Wild Swans. Right. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we had a USSR film to break up all this American. Yeah. Uh, so next time, join us back here for Hey There. Hey There, Yogi Bear. I thought it was, hey there, it's Yogi Bear. It's a Yogi Bear movie. Yeah. I mean. It's a Yogi Bear movie. Hey there, it's Yogi Bear by Hanna-Barbera. All we'll right. We'll see you guys then. Bye.